I, I'm Eric Gilbertson. I'm the chair of the Historic Preservation Commission. And I want to call our meeting of Tuesday, June 14th to order. It's the particular purpose of this meeting is to hear public comments on our draft guidelines to support the regulations that were adopted about a year ago. And first off, Meredith is going to do some technical stuff. Um, so because we do have people both here in person and on Zoom, I'm going to ask that for everybody on Zoom to please keep your microphones on mute unless you're actually speaking to the group here. Um, it helps cut down on background noise and, and just difficulty with how everything works out. Um, if you do have a comment, I'm going to ask that you raise your hand. Um, you can do that physically because I'll be keeping track of the cameras um, or using the little raise hand button on your at the bottom of your bar on Zoom. Um, and I'll be keeping an eye on that throughout the meeting. Um, this isn't a formal hearing, but it would really be helpful if you kept the, the chat function to um, any technical difficulties. It just makes it easier for, for me to keep track of where to go when I try and pull together everybody's comments um, because the, the Historic Preservation Commission will be considering all the comments we get tonight and anything else we get separately um, in making final revisions to these guidelines. Um, hold on one second. I'm just going to take one more look, make sure I didn't miss anything on that. Um, no, we'll, we'll probably try and take questions from people here in person first and then do Zoom unless somebody lets us know that they have a really strict time constraint. Um, you're also welcome to email me with any comments you have that you think of afterwards. Um, or if somebody gets disconnected, please feel free to email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. And my email is available on the website um, and in all the flyers you got. Um, did you have one? Did you want to give your Yes, I'm going to intro? give a few opening remarks. Uh, I was thinking today that this is the uh, first real revision of our design review guidelines and uh, regulations in almost 50 years. So Montpelier has had design review in place for about 50 years. And uh, it has made a lot of difference in how the town looks today. Uh, I think people really respect Vermont's historic, Montpelier's historic character. Uh, I want to thank Meredith, who has been, it wouldn't have happened without her. Uh, for sure, because she keeps me on the straight and narrow and knows the regulations inside and out. And our contractor, uh, Brandy Saxton, from uh, uh, Placemaking. Uh, is that right, Brandy? Place Sense. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so that uh, it, it's it's been a real team effort, and uh, I, I see. Steve is here from chair of the design review committee. We've worked with them on this, so that's good. And the other members of the Historic Preservation Commission, Bob McCullough, Yana Wilder, and Ward Jandel. This, it was a real team effort. And also uh, Mike Miller, who's head of the planning department, was very helpful in some very practical uh, suggestions. And this is done through a grant from the Vermont Division for Historic Preservation, where I worked for 30 years, but uh, had nothing to do with the grant uh, that's awarded by the Advisory Council. And we got some good coaching from Devin Coleman, who's the uh, Chief Architectural Historian for the state. So there, there's lots of people that have participated in this. And the reason we're doing it now, this is not a completed draft. We're doing it as a rough draft. So it's much easier to incorporate any public comment uh, into our final draft. Uh, and uh, it'll make more work for Brandy and Meredith both. But Brandy has been very patient, done most of the work through Zoom. and. She's been very innovative in thinking and doing the design uh, for the uh, uh, and uh, clever mechanically. 
So the other thing I really want to say, and I'm just about done, is that this was this guidelines were designed to do more than just complement or supplement the regulations and make it easier for people to understand uh, why uh, historic preservation is important. And uh, it's also to give some help to them in understanding their historic building and not only the ones in the design review district, but outside, there are many, many buildings in Montpelier that are historic that are not in the current design review district. So, uh, uh, so let's, uh, let's go. Let's jump in. All right, so I am going to share my screen I know everybody is probably kind of sick of PowerPoint at this point, but I'm going to do a little PowerPoint um, and give a little bit more detail on how we got here. I'll do a really brief demo of the online guidelines in case there's people who haven't actually played with those yet, and then we'll take your comments. Um, I'm going to fly through this. If somebody you know, wants it later, we'll make it available on the website. because I want to make sure there's plenty of time for people to ask questions. All right. So, and the presentation's up there as well. Um, all right. So as Eric sort of previewed, you know, what are the design guidelines? And it's really, it's for everybody involved. It's for people who are applying for permits. This is for property and business owners. Um, the design review committee is a resource for them and a resource for zoning administrators, anybody who's issuing permits in the design review overlay district. Um, and it's got a bunch of different purposes, as Eric said. Um, it's supposed to help with figuring out how to comply with the design regulations, but it's also got all sorts of best practices, um, historic preservation and rehabilitation techniques are referenced in here. If you really dig in, you'll find all sorts of resources, um, including federal resources. Um, and there's other best practices that really don't have anything to do with historic buildings that are just about maintenance, um, you know, building new buildings, how to deal with signs. There's, there's information in here on all of that. Um, as Eric referenced, we had design review regulations for a long time. They were first adopted in 1973. They were very, very basic. There were seven criteria um, when they were first adopted. Some other bits got added, but they stayed pretty much the same since 1973. And shortly thereafter, in 1976, were the first was the first cityscape workbook, which would be the first guidelines. But in 76, when that was put forward, it was a combination. It was what we're trying to propose today, as well as a planning document. Um, we no longer need that planning document to be in these guidelines. The city has other planning documents. Um, and it really wasn't something that was easy to revise. It was a lot of text. Um, in 2017, 2018, there was a push for some new design regulations. There was a lot of pushback from the city on those. Those got scrapped. And the Historic Preservation Commission was asked to draft, draft new design regulations. That process was completed in February of 2021. Once we had those, it was time to get new guideline documents. We now have regulations that we know what they're gonna be. They're very detailed. So it was time to have some illustrations to help people understand how to use them. So, um, you know, Eric, talked about this briefly. The goal here is a document that is really easy to use and it's very visually oriented. There's lots of photographs. Um, it's funded in large part by a grant, certified local government grant through the Vermont Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. Um, and this process we hired on Brandy in June of 2021 and have had multiple public meetings of the HPC throughout here. Um, and so 
here we are, we have our first draft. Um, in general, I'm gonna, I think maybe just fly through this slide. If anybody has questions on what to do when you actually have a project, let me know. The key thing is call the planning department and speak to our planning and zoning assistant. They will figure out whether you even need a permit. Um, it's, it's the best thing to do. Call us, find out. Sometimes you don't need a permit at all. Sometimes you just need an easy one in-house, no, no meetings. Sometimes you need to go to the design review committee. Um, but we'll help you with that step. The guidelines have a lot of information in them. The slide I've got up right now focuses in on the guideline standards that are keyed into the design regulations. Um, this is further into the guidelines document past the introduction and the context section. Um, and so it really focuses in on the different types of permits you might need to get under the design regulations. So stuff to do with building maintenance or rehabilitation, um, if you were gonna do an addition or demolition, actual construction of new structures, um, things to do with how your site is designed, um, including lighting, um, where your mechanicals or utilities go, there's a section on signs and you haven't drafted it yet, but there's going to be a section on code compliance. Thoughtful ways to be able to adjust, say, your railings or do something else that's required by fire and safety code and suggestions on how to do that in a way that is still retaining the character of a building, but still meeting code. Um, I'm going to do a quick demo of the site so people can see. Does everybody still see the design guidelines at this point? Nope. Hold on. I got to stop sharing and restare. Meredith is just doing that. One thing uh, I want to say is that I'm, I'm also vice chair of the design review committee. Steve Everett's the chair. And uh, uh, the, the design review committee really likes people to come in with, likes to help people get their projects to be as good as they can, not not only just with historic preservation issues, but other issues. Uh, people on the design review committee know a lot about construction and have helped a lot of people make their projects more affordable and better preservation. And so that's, we're encouraging people to, to do that. Yeah. And hopefully these guidelines will help give out some of that information before you even go to a committee meeting. Um, so for anyone who hasn't navigated through this yet, there are arrows in this area. When I move forward, there'll be one over here to be able to navigate through the pages. There's also some at the top of the page. Um, and once you get in a little further, so the table of contents is clickable so you can jump to different sections. And there's also tabs up here. Once you get into the introduction, there's tabs up at the top to go to different sections. I'm just gonna go to the third major section, guidelines, just so that people can see a little bit how this works if they haven't been on the site yet. Um, so this is the first page. And once you actually get in, and this is different than the printed version, which is nice, there's a column of the text of the guidelines over here on the right. And the first sentence really reflects what's in the design regulations. And then there's more text that helps explain that. And if you click on the number next to it, it changes the pictures down below. We have still some work to do on picking out some pictures for illustrating these different guidelines and working some on fine tuning some of the captions, but they're gonna really, we hope, illustrate examples of in some places, some ways how to meet the guidelines. And in some cases, things that probably aren't gonna be acceptable to the design review committee. Um, so this section is all on maintenance and rehabilitation of windows and doors. Um, and so here there's a section on how to deal with shutters. This is kind of a good example of showing um, options. Um, so these shutters are 
completely operational. They're still attached up here on the frame so they can close, or at least it looks like it can close, even if it doesn't, but it looks like the standard ones. Um, and then you have situations, you know, like this one where they're really just decorative shutters. They're not sized right for the windows. That's something that the design review committee really wouldn't wouldn't be approving as a change as something new um, for a part of a project. Um, and so we have this type type of illustration throughout all of these design guideline standards that are keyed into specific regulations. So if you come to the planning department, let us know that you have a project and it's going to involve a porch or entry or something like that. And you have questions about what you should do. If need be one, we can print off the section that relates to what you, what you're working on or point you to it and help you design the project. Um, if need be, or at least just give you some pointers on the types of things that the committee is probably going to be looking for. I think I'm going to stop here and ask for questions. Questions, comments, any and all. Um, and for anybody here in person, if you want to make a comment, we're going to ask that you come up to the stand up microphone. Um, that way, anybody remote can hear you um, and we can get it recorded for, for Orca Media. And, and while you're thinking, if the members of the Stark Preservation Commission would introduce themselves and make any comments they feel like. Excuse me, I'll start because I'm here. I'm Ward Joyce. I'm a local architect. I've only been on the committee for a couple months, and I joined um, to help have enough people on the committee for a quorum, and we'll stick along, stick around <laughs> as long as I'm needed. Thank you. Awesome. <clears throat> Your input has been very helpful, Ward. Yana, you want to introduce yourself? Yep, uh, Yana Walder. I work for um, Lakefront Property Management, and I uh, manage a lot of the older historic buildings in Montpelier and around Vermont. And uh, it's been a pleasure to learn a lot from uh, folks who have been doing it for a long time. Thank you. Thanks. Comments, questions? We really want comments and questions. <laughs> yeah. um, and please do introduce yourself. That way we, it just helps. Uh, yeah, I'm Andrew Jackson and I live in Bailey Avenue. Uh, a couple of questions. One is, uh, well, is this being recorded and, and can, will that be available on the website? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm a little behind the curve on this a little bit, but a while ago, there was a, a thing on the website that indicated where the historic district boundaries were. And it was pretty low res and hard to tell. And I can't really tell whether my property is in or out at 19 Bailey Avenue. I was wondering if anybody could tell me whether it is. Uh, I can, if you give me a minute, <laughs> I would need to pull it up on my, on my mapping. I can look at that. Um, we have actually just updated our web page to have a better image of the design review overlay boundaries. We just did that today or yesterday. Um, so hopefully it'll be easier for people to find that. It does not have um, street names on it or parcel numbers. Uh, but yes, you are within the design review overlay. You're just so the the, we have the big design review overlay boundary. And then inside of that, there's an area that we can't touch, the Capitol Complex, which is all governed by the Capitol Complex Commission. But you're a few a few parcels past that. So you are in the design review overlay. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm suggesting, and you're probably ahead of me on this as well, that that information and links to it be posted on Front Porch Forum for okay. as soon as possible because that's that seems to be have become um, a central form of communication in in the community. I can definitely do that. I can do a follow up to tonight, so to Front Porch Forum that probably has a link to this recording of tonight, okay. 
and um, also make sure to send out the, where they can go on our website to see a map of the design review overlay. I think that's a great idea. Thank you, okay. Andrew. Thank you. One of the nice things about the the 1976 book was printed, so it was set in stone, couldn't be changed, and we really plan on uh, making this flexible so if new information, more helpful information, we'll add it to the website, and the city can also print you off a copy if you ask uh, for that, or you can print it up off yourself. You lose some of the interactive parts of it because the, the way it some of the references are to the uh, Secretary of Interior's uh, briefs, which are guidelines on historic preservation act activity, and they have they have a lot of really good technical information. So we're really trying to get the public informed on what they can do with their historic building, what the advantages of it are, and to keep Montpelier. Uh, really looking historic. A, a, a few years ago, I hosted a meeting of state historic preservation officers from across the country, and they were simply blown away by Montpelier. And these are the experts that look at this stuff all over the country. The downtown blew them away. The neighborhoods blew them away that they could walk around Montpelier. I told them not to bring cars that we'd pick them up at the airport. They brought cars and parked them, and all they did is drive back and forth from the airport. So Montpelier is a really special place, a valuable place. Anybody else in person want to chat before I move to? OK. Frank or Chap? Any comments, questions? Please, <laughs> we were looking for feedback. That's really great tech that you have. Like the interactive feature is really, really enviable. It's a, it's a really great platform. Very, um, yeah, it's very innovative and it's cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> That's great. Well, hopefully, people will find it useful over time. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Steve, would you like to say something as chair of the design review committee? Don't have to. I don't want to put you on the spot, but. <laughs> Steve Everett, resident of Montpelier and chair of the design review committee. And I just want to emphasize that we view the committee as a resource for everybody in Montpelier, whether you are a residential property owner, tenant, or commercial property owner, tenant. And our goal is to try to put a lot of pieces together, again, and act as a resource for energy conservation, preserving historic structures. And again, our committee has a number of architects and people with specialty experience. And again, we would like to be a resource for people who need to tackle or wish to tackle a project regarding their property. And I can answer any questions anybody else might have. I'm not seeing questions online. I, I just wanna, as part of that resource aspect for the design review committee, just to let people know that if you have questions about your project and you're not quite ready to file an application, and it's not something that the planning department staff can really advise you on, the design review committee does take sort of pre-application discussion um, where as long as there's room on the agenda, you can come in under other business and ask them questions about your project. Um, and it really, it's a great resource. We've had had people come for small projects and big projects for that, that type of, of discussion so that they get the committee's input before they file a permit application or pay any fees. Um, we, we just, we need to, you know, the planning department needs to coordinate with you to make sure that there's an agenda that has room on it for you um, and so that we fit you in. But that's a possibility as well. And it's very helpful. Thank you, Steve. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. 
Um, not seeing anybody else with raised hands right now. I do have a couple of other things prepared um, to just walk through a couple of other sections that are in the guidelines that are separate from those standards that I showed you um, that I thought were useful types of information that are in the guidelines. Um, so let me do that and then see if maybe Brandy has anything she wants to add since she is the the driver once we gave her all the information she took everything we that the hpc wanted and our historic information and molded it all into this great yeah, and she brought format. together she's done several towns guide guides for several towns so she brought a broader view and and we did look at guidelines really from all over the country when we started this project we kind of forgotten that actually but we did we looked at a lot of different yeah. we did we looked at guidelines both within Vermont and outside to try and find find examples that were useful. Um, so if people have questions, just I know this is kind of small. <laughs> if people have are I'm trying to figure out how the process actually works in the guidelines, there is this interactive flow chart where and I can go back to the guidelines themselves to show you. But when you click on different parts of the process and how how to go through the design review process, it'll pop up with some information, including contacts um, and details. So as I said before, earlier in the slideshow, first step is to contact the um, planning and zoning assistant. She'll guide you through whether you don't need a permit at all, so you can go straight to doing your work, or if you have to submit an application for a permit. Um, in this, on the guidelines, if you hit submit application and tap that, it's gonna pop up with some guidance on the types of things that need to be in your application. Um, once you submit an application, there's two different ways you might need to go for design review. It might be administrative re review, which is basically me taking a look and making sure you meet the correct criteria, or it might need to go to the design review committee. So this is just, it's an interactive way to figure out what the permitting process is. Um, so there's details of that in the guidelines. We also have this large context section, including a page that's about preparing your application and some really key terms that are in the guidelines. And they're in the guidelines because they're in the regulations. So how to understand what compatibility means. Um, what, what does essential form and character mean? It, it, there's a lot of discussion in here, including some links to other resources, um, you know, because compatibility doesn't mean it needs to look like the thing next to it. Um, there's there's much more to it than that. Um, so this is a, a really good resource page for digging into what some of those terms of art mean. There's also sections in the guidelines keyed into learning what the different parts of windows and doors and all these aspects of a building, how they're going to be talked about in the design review committee, because you might get some guidance from somebody talking about, you know, that your window needs to be a six over six or a three over six. What does that mean? It's in here in the guidelines. Um, same with regard to, you know, what what all the different parts of a window are. That's not here, but this talks about all the different types. Um, and that's that's what I have already prepared. If somebody has questions and wants to see something specific in the guidelines, I can go back to that. Um, we can also go to Brandy if she has anything she wants to add. Does anybody have any questions right now? Comments, thoughts? <laughs> nope, I'm getting head shakes online. <laughs> And talk these things on. <laughs> the, um, the one thing I might add, Meredith, that you haven't mentioned is that the design guidelines are also about um, <clears throat> fitting new construction in. So I think one of the things that's interesting is that design review and came about in Montpelier kind of in response to a, a downturn, really, that there wasn't growth, that with the interstate growth was starting to happen outside the city. 
Um, and historic preservation was a response, was the city's policy response to try to turn um, those conditions around to some extent. Um, and now this past decade was the first decade since the 1960s that Montpelier has added residents has grown. Um, and so it's it's kind of a fitting time to redo the regulations um, as there's sort of a, ch a change uh, perhaps underway in the city. And you are also looking at how to, to fit new projects in, in and address um, the energy components and things like that while maintaining that historic fabric. So there's a whole section in the guidelines uh, that deal with with new construction and um, ways to um, to to do that in that respects the his, what the history around it, but is also very potentially contemporary and 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 distinct from what was before. Thank you, Brandy. I did miss out on that. Mentioned it briefly at the beginning and didn't zero in. That yeah, the the guidelines, as Eric said, my place is a special place, but it needs to grow. It needs to change. Um, and there haven't been a lot of new buildings in downtown, um, in the last 20 years, but there have been proposals for them. I mean, we have the transit center now, um, there was a proposal for a new building down on state street hasn't been built. My guess is there's going to be something there at some point, um, in front of the thrush. It's just, we don't know what yet. Um, and so the design review regulations deal with that and how to build something that's new, and modern, but still fits in with the city. And so the guidelines have tried to elaborate on that um, and have illustrations on demonstrating how that can be done. Um, and so there's a lot of photographs in here. You know, Montpelier doesn't have a lot of examples of the new, new buildings, um, but there's a lot of examples in these guidelines to show different ways that things can be done, sometimes well, sometimes not. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you could come up to the microphone, that way people remotely can hear you too. That work with the transit center was there some discussion about compatibility with the transit center? Um, there. So the transit center was one before I was here, and I'm trying to remember if that was approved under the old design review regulations or the new ones. I can't remember when the permit. It was, the, it was the old one. I think it was the state. old ones, but it was still, it still would have, there still would have been that discussion because it would have had to go through design review. Um, no, um, and I don't think it's in the exclusion zone. Um, we've, okay. we've had some changes to where lines are drawn. Um, we we had actually, the building got changed quite a bit as a result of comments from design review. And, there. I was there. You and Steve were there. Steve and I have been there for twenty years or more. So the the uh, uh, the mostly in terms of materials uh, and compatibility, making sure the general massing of the building, you know, fit in with the downtown, the hotel, and all of that. And uh, it's uh, yes, it was it it was reviewed. Uh, and one of the interesting things is sort of a philosophical thing on review committees is, you know, everybody has an opinion. You can't do everything in regulations. I mean, it's, you can't. And so it is It is a human judgment. And the people on the design review committee are really pretty aware of all of that and and really look at things and try to figure out a way something can happen uh, and still meet the standards. Uh, Steve, I've got a question for you, actually. Would design review look at something that was actually outside the district just as an advice piece? Yeah, come up to the microphone so people remote can hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Getting you your exercise. I, I just kind of thought of that, but, you know, this. I, I think it's possible to look at something outside of the district. Uh, probably on a an informal review yeah, right. or recommendation process, but there is no formal uh, necessity to come before the before an approval if you're outside the district. Right. It would just be it would just be 
I mean, you, what you basically end up with is a panel of experts that can look at your project and try to help you make it a better project. Of course, if you're not in the district, it's just... Again, it's not a requirement, I, but if somebody right. has a project that they're doing outside of the district or a remodel or an addition or something, and they want some information about what might fit in better if it was in the district, I mean, some people might be just interested in, and again, we'd see ourselves as a, as a resource and we're able to provide some advice informally. And, and we hope the guidelines are useful to people, anybody that owns an historic building in Montpelier. Or any building. Or any kind of a building or wants to build a new building anywhere as something that sort of looks at the way Montpelier as a city views itself and views new construction. Or well, it, it does several things. So you can look at making your building more efficient, making the building look, again, maintain its historic importance and try to do all those things at the same time. And again, it just it preserves the value of your building and the long-term usefulness. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, it looks like we lost chap. Well, we made it. We got twenty minutes left. <laughs> so anybody who wants to say anything, we don't have to go for a full hour, but. Yeah. At least at least some people turned up, so that's helpful. And uh, if anybody wants to call me or anybody and with particular questions, that's fine too. Yeah. We're we're available. Okay. I didn't really come up with a big plan for how to close things out, actually. No. <laughs> um, I, I, I do want to thank people, those of you who came out on a beautiful summer evening. We're not quite in summer yet, are we? It feels like it, though. It, it is. It's such a beautiful day. Well, uh, yep, yep. So um, we have got... At this point, um, our grant period ends in August. So we are aiming to have a final version of these guidelines um, and wrap up our work with, with Brandy um, by August. And so we're, we're gonna be work on refining and filling in some holes in the guidelines between now and then. So any comments um, during that time would be great if possible send them to me, but if you happen to have contact information for our HPC members, feel free to send it to them as well. Um, and again, it's uh, mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, and my contact information is on the planning department website. Um, and then the we don't know the exact timeline moving on from August. Um, the guidelines before we can really post them as official policy documents um, will need to be approved by city council. Um, it's not a change to the actual rules, so it won't need the dual public hearing process, but it will need the official sort of blessing from planning commission and city council. And then hopefully we'll be able to be making these live some point in the fall. Um, and then they'll be out there as a resource for everybody who needs them. Um, and I will keep keep things updated on the city website, but also I think the using Front Porch Forum to announce things um, and some of our other avenues has been really helpful. Um, so we'll, we'll continue that process. Probably won't put anything in the bridge the next time around, but um, you can also keep an eye on the Planning Commission and City Council agendas. Um, because once this is, goes before them, it'll be on their official agendas. So hopefully, hopefully sometime this fall, that's my guess. And it'll also depend on how busy. The, the, the planning are. commission has been very helpful. They're the ones that's decided that this needed to be done. They've been helpful with comments and uh, some criticism from time to time, but uh, it was very constructive. Yeah. Um, so we don't want people in Montpelier to hate regulation. You know, we want them to 
see that it's helpful and that it really contributes to our sense of community and the place we live. So hopefully the guidelines will help some of those conversations. Thank you everybody for being here, both remotely and in person. We really, really appreciate it. Um, the Historic Preservation Commission will be having a, it's one of its regular meetings beginning at seven o'clock tonight across the hall. Um, it's gonna be mostly a little bit of a debriefing on tonight. Um, there's not a whole lot of else going on right now other than this project. Um, and their standard meeting nights are the second Tuesday of every month. So we welcome you attending in July. The next, that meeting will be July 12th um, or August. We would love to see people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we, we usually meet in the, um, in the city manager's office and on Zoom. Um, so yeah, but the city manager's office is our usual place. We're not swamped with public attendees. Yeah, we usually go in a small, <laughs> small room. <laughs> so we, we welcome people to come to the meeting. Yeah. Um, and you. we have openings for additional commission members, commissioners. If anybody has an interest in joining the Historic Preservation Commission, reach out to me. I can give you a link to the application. Um, it's a, you know, you get on there by being appointed by city council, um, but we do have open seats and welcome different viewpoints for sure. So thank you. Yana, we'll see you on Zoom in about 40, 15 minutes. Awesome. You wanna? It's like the meeting is closed. <laughs> <laughs>